Good afternoon, groovy citizens, and happy, satisfying Saturday to each and every one of you. So you guys, today has been an interesting day. It started out raining and quite chilly this morning. Right now it's 52 degrees, the sun is out, so I'm thankful that Phone it's- book update failed. Thank you. I'm glad that it stopped raining. So it's a little chilly. I mean, you, you kind of need a jacket on. <clears throat> I will say that because it's only 52, but the sun is out, so it makes the world a difference. I'm just glad it stopped raining. Now, my like I said, my day has been busy. We had a wonderful college and career event at my church today and the entrepreneur ministry. This is the first year that we've partnered with the college and career event that they have every year and it was such a success. So we had uh, several of us in the ministry that came out, showcased our businesses, as well as we had area schools, we had Howard, we had Georgetown, we had Norfolk State, we had Bowie State. And then as far as our vendors, my sister had her event planning stuff. Myself, I had my coaching. Then we had Antoine with his catering. Tim, he's a real estate agent. We had Sybil who does HR stuff. And Lord forgive me, I can't remember the young lady's name. When I tell you she does the best and most beautiful balloon art for your event, please believe me absolutely gorgeous and she was there and who else mm, i think that was it but the the theme the whole theme with this was is that we wanted the young people to understand that yes we encourage you to go to school get a degree but the reality is is that everybody is not college material let's just be honest not everybody can afford college not everybody wants to get into debt paying for college trust me i i, I know that firsthand okay so we wanted them to understand that there are other things that you can do if college is not for you you know maybe you want to go to a trade school there are certifications that you can get that will allow you to do whatever that thing is that you choose that, that you want to do. And so we just kind of got up myself, my sister and Tim, and we just said, talked about ourselves and our businesses and just sharing with them, you know, the things that you, that are possible that you can do. Because my thing is you can go to school and get your law degree, but you don't have to work at a law firm. You can start your own firm. You can go to school and get your culinary <clears throat> degree and start your own catering business. You, you have people that have gone to school to do many things and have started their own business. So that's what the whole premise of that was about. And it was, real, it was a really great event in spite of all the rain. I mean, we were inside, of course, but in spite of all the rain, it was a great event. And so I'm so, so thankful for that. Now, I told you all yesterday that I was going to make sure I shared my certifications with you all because I didn't have the information yesterday. But these are the, <clears throat> the three actually four but the three that i wanted to share with you all i have i'm a certified mental health first aid that is the certification and that really is working with persons who let's say may be having a mental meltdown you know what i mean and so that i have a certi certification in that i'm a certified life coach I am also a certified personal responsibility coach. That is the PRAC training that I just finished last week. And so I'm so excited about that. I cannot wait to start teaching classes in that, that area because what that, that really does is it helps people to figure out who they are and where they wanna go. And so I want to do workshops that <clears throat> have to do with those persons who are under the umbrella of what we call re-entry, which as you all may or may not know, are those persons that have been incarcerated because a lot of times they've been incarcerated so long that things have changed. And so they need somebody to kind of help guide them in the direction that they need to go in terms of getting their life back on track. 
And so I'm just so thankful as I share with the young people, I am thankful that I get to do the thing that God has called me to do. I get to do the thing that puts a smile on my face. I get to do the thing that 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 I just give my heart and soul to because I truly believe in it. But I also have a certification as a mediation and conflict resolution uh, specialist, which is a mediator. So if you have a need for a mediator, please, please, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I love helping people work through their issues because I do believe that that a lot of times if we sit down at the table and we have a mediator, okay, work with us, we can get through a lot of things where we don't have to go and take it to the courts and, and, and take things, you know, higher where we now have to get an attorney and all that other good stuff. So I'll, all of my, all that will be in the description box. Please reach out. Let's talk. Let's make it work. Now, today's topic is the most valuable lessons from Epictetus, and these are some Stoic philosophies that Epictetus has. And just in case you're you're thinking, who in the world is Epictetus? If you haven't been following me for a rap, for a while, then let me tell you who he was. He was born in 50 A.D. So y'all know that was a long time ago, and he died in 135 so at the age and he died at the age of 85 years old so he was primarily interested in ethics which i i'm happy and and, and interested in that area so it, it excited me to know that that was his his area of interest and he believed that true education consisted in recognizing that there is only one thing that belongs to an individual fully and that was his or her will and or purpose can i say that one more time mm. Epictetus believed that there is only one thing that belongs to an individual fully. I mean, fully outright. And that is his or her will and or purpose. Mm. This life that you have right here before you, that doesn't belong to you. Because at some point, God's going to call you back home. The house that you live in, it belongs to you and yet it doesn't leave this earth and see won't the bank take that house back if you don't have somebody else named on it the air that you that you breathe doesn't belong to you that's something that god allows us to to have when you wake up in the morning life does not necessarily belong to you because that's something that god gives us but you have full control over your will and your purpose what are you going to do with it? Mm, that's powerful. So let's jump into the lessons that I want to share with you. I have five of them and then I'm going to let you be. Because after I finish this, y'all, I have to go and record today's podcast. So number one, he said, we must differentiate between what is under our control and what is not. And if you've been hanging out with me for any length of time, then y'all know I'm always sharing that with you. I'm always reminding you that the only things that you have I'm sorry, that you have to, to figure out what's under your control and what is not. You cannot control somebody else's behavior. You cannot control what other people think of you. You may want to, but you can't. You can do everything right. You can live in the, the right neighborhood. You can know the right people. You can dress the right way. And people are still going to think what they want to think about you and about me. Okay, so why bother trying to make them think something just because you want them to think it? Number two, we must be grateful for both the good and the bad that happens to us. Now, I know what you're thinking because I can hear you in the back of the room. You're saying, Michelle, you mean to tell me that I should be thankful for the bad? Mm. Well, Epictetus says that both situations shape us as individuals. And that is so true. You are who you are because of the good things and the bad things that have happened to you. I am 
who I am because of the good things and the bad things that have happened to me. Do you realize that you have individuals in this world who would not be where they are right now if something bad had not happened to them? You have people that are CEOs of huge companies. And the reason why they're CEOs of huge companies is because nobody wanted to hire them. You have people who are owners of Fortune 500 companies right now as a direct result of being fired from a job that they wanted ever since they were kids and couldn't wait to get into and maybe there were some some cutbacks and they had to let go of some people and they were on the list and so instead of getting down and staying down they said you know what i'm gonna start my own business and they are where they are like i said because of the bad thing that happened to them mm. number three learn to listen you cannot grow as a person if you already believe you know everything. I don't know about you all, but I don't know everything. I learn something new every single day. As a matter of fact, when I have my prayer meditation time and I'm talking to God, every day I say, Lord, let me learn one new thing today. Just one. More is great, but just let me learn one new thing today that I did not know yesterday. And that is my goal every single day is to learn something new. But if you have the mindset that you know it all and nobody can teach you anything, then you are always going to be stuck. Mm. Number four, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my heat just right because like I said, I got chilly. Number four, be curious and stay in constant learning as only the educated man, well, I'm going to throw in, or woman is free. Mm, let me say that one more time. Be curious and stay in constant learning as only the educated man and or woman is free. Do you know that a lot of the problems that we have as individuals is because we're not educated? There are a lot of people right now who are owners of homes and because you were not educated properly in the home buying process, that that lending institution got you to sign your name on some paperwork that you didn't even really read. Because somebody said, oh, just sign here, here, and here. And this right here tells you this, and this tells you that, and this tells you the other, and you believe them. So you just got to sign them, you got to sign them. And then later on down the road, after you had somebody else look over the paperwork, you realize, Lord, what in the world did I get myself into? And it's not just purchasing a home, it's a lot of things. So make sure that you are always educated. And when I say that, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to go back to school to get another degree. <clears throat> I'm not saying that at all. But do you know there are times when I have the downtime on the weekends that I like to go to, to YouTube and I search for various topics and I'm always looking to learn something new. Because I want to, to be the person that shows you and that shows you, but shows myself <laughs> that I'm, I'm always growing and I always want to be in the know. And a lot of times I'm learning about things that I'm never going to use, but at least I know something about it. Okay, so again, be curious, stay in constant learning as only the educated man and or woman is free. Number five, last but not least, work on self-discipline. See, we all have responsibilities and tasks that we may not feel like doing, but if you have to do something, just do it. Okay? It's as simple as that. We all have tasks that we may not feel like doing, but if there's something that you need to do, get up and just do it. I know that is Nike's slogan, but that's the reality. Just get up and do it. You know that you've got to go to work because you want to eat, right? 
you want that paycheck at the end of the week or you want that paycheck every two weeks or how often you get how often you get paid the 15th and the 30th once a month whatever but you know that in order to collect that paycheck you've got to get up and go to work you don't always feel like going to work correct but you do it anyway why because you want that check it's not about how you feel it's not about what you want to do it's about right now this is the job that you have and if you don't get up and go do that job you're not going to have a paycheck waiting for you so i want to encourage each and every one of you to stop working off your feelings stop allowing your feelings to dictate and determine what you will and won't do i mean it's, it's as simple as that it's so easy to say oh you know what i don't feel like going to work today i think i'm gonna sleep in and you do that but it, if you're paid hourly you get that check and guess what? That check is not looking like what you need it to look like and now you're in your feelings. But then you've gotta be real with yourself and say, mm, you know what, I did call in twice last week. That's why I only got paid for three days or it depends on how many days a week. If you work six days a week, you called in two days where well, you're only gonna have four days of pay. If you work five days a week, you called in two, you're only gonna have three days of pay and that's not gonna be a whole lot. So I want to encourage you to stop giving in to your feelings. I've shared with you all before, I'll share it one more time and I'm gonna let you be. Excuse me, but there are times when I do things that I don't necessarily feel like doing. I just don't, okay? But I do it because what I do is, excuse me, not about me. It's about, it's about the people that I serve. It's about the people that are depending on me to do what I said I was going to do. It's about growing my business. I don't just like, th last Sunday, case in point. Last Sunday, I woke up and I won't lie, I was tired. I was just a little tired. I could have used a little bit more sleep. And I didn't feel like going to church and that little voice said, girl, just lay down a little while longer and just stream. And I could have. I very well could have, but it's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody, getting a word, feeling it firsthand, worshiping with your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just nothing like it. And I get it. If you're not able to, to get out the house, then that's one thing. But if you can, get your behind up and go into church. Because I guarantee you got up and went to work every day that week. You went out and hung out with your friends your loved ones or whoever. So if you can do all of that, you can, and you probably didn't feel like doing most of the stuff I just named. So if you can do all of that when you don't feel like it, you can get up on Sunday and give God just a little bit of time. Mm, come on somebody, that'll preach all by itself. But I said, and also you have time, or I should say I have times, I've shared with you all before, where I don't necessarily feel like motivating anybody to do anything because I don't necessarily feel motivated. Maybe I'm tired from working all week. Not only do I have a job, but I have a business to run. And I've got to stay on top of my business. I'm an active member in my church. And I've got to do the things that God has called me to do. Why? Because he's called me to do them that's number one, but also because somebody is counting on me to do what I said I was going to do. Case in point, you all know I have my clients on Friday night. Well, I've got to be on that Zoom call because they're expecting me to be on that Zoom call. Regardless of how I feel, I've got to put that in the, in the closet someplace because they're counting on me to be there to help support them through whatever it is that they're dealing with. And so sometimes we have to do things that we don't feel like doing, okay? To always remember that. Let me do a quick recap and I'm gonna let you be. So here are the, some of the most valuable lessons from Epictetus. He said, number one, we must differentiate between what is under our control and what is not. Number two, we must be grateful for both the good and the bad that happens to us. Number three, we must learn to listen. Mm. 
Number four, we must be curious and stay in constant learning as only the educated man, and I throw in woman, is free. And number five, he said work on self-discipline. Let me say this real quick, because I, I forgot to mention this. There are so many people in life that won't go any further than where they are right now because they lack self-discipline. That's all I wanted to say. Self-discipline can take you far. So don't forget that. Now, having said that, you guys, I'm going to let you be because like I said, I need to get in here and record today's podcast. And then I'm going to take me a quick power nap. And then I'm going to get up and I'm going to start working on content for next week. And so, and I'll finish it up tomorrow too. I, I Now, I will say that I did tell y'all, if you said you're going to do something, you need to do it. I did say I was going to do a cooking video tomorrow. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to do that. I might have to do it during the week only because yeah I just I've had a long day we'll see yeah we'll see I, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rule it out but we will see anyway getting back to what I was getting ready to say thank you so much for giving me just a little bit of your time to speak life to you and hopefully something I said resonates with you and it carries you throughout the rest of this day the rest of this week or I should say this weekend, the rest of this month, the rest of this quarter, the rest of this year. Because I want nothing but the best for you. This is why I'm always making sure that I'm trying to encourage, even if it's just one person, Lord, just one. More is great, but just one. I'm trying to encourage to do better and be better. Okay? Again, having said that, if you're new to my, watching my videos, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I do car conversations every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So come back on Monday when I have a whole new topic for you. Come back next week in general and the week after that and the week after that and so on and so on. If this is not your first rodeo, I want to say welcome back. You know, I miss you when I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. No matter what you do, no matter where you go. I just want you to be safe. Be safe and have fun, okay? Because that's what's important to me. And hopefully it's imp important to you as well. So you know the drill and you know the spill. I love you to the moon and back and there is nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing that you can ever do about it because I love you and I want nothing but the best for you. Always remember that. Love you. Talk to you again on Monday.